After World War II, this text was found on a cellar wall in a concentration camp. This was a powerful statement of faith proclaimed in a time of despair. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I don't feel it. I believe in God even when God is silent. I believe. Happy New Year, church, and welcome to worship on this January 3rd Sunday with Methodists across the Gallatin Valley here at Bozeman United Methodist Church and Living Waters United Methodist Church in Belgrade. I'm Reverend Eric Strader, one of the pastors here, and want to say how great it is to have you joining us this morning. Please take a moment, if you would, and sign in in the comments section. It's how we pass the pad so we know people are here. And you don't even have to wait for somebody to pass it back to you. You can immediately see who you're worshiping with. But this is a great way to be in dialogue and connection with one another. So take a moment, chat with your friends and your church family. Some announcements this morning we want to bring to your attention. Watch for a lot of information coming out in the January Chimes. If you haven't seen the Chimes, it was emailed this past week. There's tons of information about what's coming up. A few of the things is, here is a Disciple video promo we want you to watch. Hi, I'm Michelle Young and this is my husband Adam and uh, we are going to be leading a disciple Bible study class um, coming up in a few weeks 
and uh, we just wanted to introduce ourselves. We moved here about a year and a half ago from Indiana uh, due to a job change and uh, we found BUMC because we attended a United Methodist Church in the Indianapolis area and we're instantly drawn to BUMC because of the community involvement and just the personal touch that you get at BUMC that even though it's kind of a large church you still feel like family. Studying the Bible uh, is for us has been uh, really kind of the effort that we've made to um, get to know Jesus better and um, to really ask hard questions and to not just pick little pieces out of the Bible and, and use them, but to, but to really understand the context of, of what was said and, and what was meant by it. Disciple for us has been a, a really meaningful experience uh, that uh, we have gone from, from maybe being a little overwhelmed sometimes by the Bible um, to really understanding it to be a collection of letters uh, written by people to other people at specific places at specific times. Uh, and that's really helped us to maybe connect better with the Bible and realize that um, it's not that different for people today than it was then. Uh, we just need to find ways to, to relate and disciples is a, a really good way uh, to kind of make the Bible come to life. Child, earth child, go between of God. Love child, Christ child, heaven's lightning rod. The love of God, the hope of God, peace of God. The joy of God is with us this night. It is not enforced, predetermined, naive, fleeing, or imposed. Today, this gift given freely or for our life. These gifts from God are unpredictable, given freely and with tenderness, and meant to lead us to vibration. Today we remember the born homeless, the one born homeless who would become a refuge, who would teach us how to live fiercely, encourage in our fear. God is gestating in darkness and will be born again. We come to you, Holy One, as wisdom incarnate, as flickering flame, as hope, peace, joy, and love enfleshed. You come with relief in your presence, your promise, your gift, the one and only, to us this yea again. We come to you this advent in need, with longing and grief, captive to fear, desiring a more just world, a more sustainable way of living on the earth. For every living thing caught and held in this inescapable network of mutual life. We long for this child to grow and show us the way of liberation. And so this Advent, we pause, we breathe, we pray, we dig deep, we reach out, we rise up, we remember, we vision, we wait, expectant. We light candles, we labor, and he is born. Amen. This year, next year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone.
one alive. This year, next year, let the day arrive when Christmas comes for everyone, everyone alive. may not remember that some time ago, Reverend Eric and I preached a worship theme entitled Canoeing the Mountains. This series utilized Todd Bolsinger's book by the same name. Bolsinger uses explorers Lewis and Clark's need to adapt as a parallel for the church's need to do likewise. While the crew had prepared to find a downhill waterway to the Pacific Ocean, instead they found themselves in the Great Rocky Mountains. The explorers had to leave behind their canoes and find another way. Talk about the makings for a mental breakdown. 
In his diary, Meriwether Lewis said, After refreshing ourselves, we proceeded on to the top of the dividing ridge, from which I discovered immense ranges of high mountains still to the west of us, with their tops covered with snow in the month of August. I feel your pain, Meriwether. I feel your pain. The need for the church to find another way has been true now for quite some time, but it was so, so, so much more true in the past 11 months. Here are two of the most important things that ministry in a pandemic affirmed for me. In the new year, no matter what the church looks like, these are things that we will need to continue to remember are so important. The body of Christ must walk, run, sit, sometimes even hike with people when it hurts the most. I have a good friend whose parents are still connected to the couples from the Sunday school class they began attending many years ago. They supported one another through miscarriages, rebellious teenagers, cancer, and now they're all grandparents. Because crisis promotes vulnerability, the daily parents check-in quickly formed what I believe to be that level of connection. The bonds formed in that group will last a lifetime. A powerful Stephen ministry program is another example of the ways that we sat with one another when it may have been easier not to. While I would never encourage crisis, this time of ministry reminded me that the body of Christ must always come together to lean on the other parts. We need one another. Christ calls us to love one another as he loved us, and we must never forget as a church how much that kind of love matters. Second, the body of Christ needs to be a place that builds bridges and fills the gaps that divide us. 2020 reminded me that the church is young and old, new and lifelong members. It is white, and it should be open to learning and acting upon why that is. It is gay and straight and everything in between. The church is in Bozeman and Belgrade and Michigan, Ohio, San Salvador and beyond. You might already know I'm a list person. I have a list of things to do on my phone, my computer. I have a list of things I wanna remember, books I wanna read, podcasts I wanna to listen to, movies I wanna watch. Okay, you get the idea. Do your mental health a favor and make a list of the things that you learned in 2020. Go ahead, get something to write with. I'll wait. Proverbs 1.5 says, let the wise hear and increase in learning, and the one who understands obtain guidance. Some may say, let the past be the past, but when I look at scripture, even God had to learn that we weren't getting it on our own. After years of ruling with judges and kings and sending prophets to share the message, God finally learned from their mistakes and figured out that they were going to have to come down here and show us. I want to end with a quote from the book. Lewis and Clark and their Corps of Discovery were looking for a water route, but now they had run out of water. How do you canoe over the mountains? You don't. If you want to continue forward, you change, you adapt. Meriwether Lewis looked at the miles and miles of snow-covered peaks and knew that to continue his journey would be to change his entire approach. The same is true for all who are called to leave beyond the boundaries of what is known. We go through a personal transformation of identity. We go from being river rats to mountain climbers. We keep on course with the same goal, but change absolutely everything required to make it through the uncharted territory. We ditch the canoes, ask for help, find horses, and cross the mountains. You let go, you learn as you go, and you keep going no matter what. It's a new year, and it's a time for new possibilities. world waits for a miracle the heart longs for a little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel 
child prays for peace on earth and she's calling out from a sea of her oh come oh come Emmanuel and can you hear the angels singing glory to the light of the world glory the light of the world is Drought breaks with the tears of a mother. Baby's cry is the sound of love. Come down, come down, Emmanuel. He is the song for the suffering. He is Messiah, the Prince of Peace. He has come, has come. world waits for a miracle the heart longs for a little bit of hope oh come oh come Emmanuel As we come to this time of prayer, let us take a deep breath, reminding ourselves it is okay to slow down in this busy world, reminding us that even in our dark moments, Christ brings the light into all of our hearts. Hear these words from a poem from Reverend M. Barclay. Now is not a time for rushing past joy. Do not move too quickly from any good thing, not laughter or a sight of beauty, not a taste, a feeling, a companion, or a truth. These are gifts not to be wasted.
Be generous in sharing, linger and give thanks. Be excessive in awe. Just do not hurry through them as if they are not precious in this season of grief. When you encounter the harder things, still move slow. Open to wisdom's guidance through pain. Listen patiently to your fear. Pause so that the voice of your body can speak. You cannot hurry in a heartbreak or loss and hope to make it through. And all of this, not only for the sake of your own endurance, but also for each other. When we tend inward, we prevent that which makes our spirit decay. When we nurture our soul, we grow in our capacities to contribute to the whole. Nothing much of value grows quickly, not courage nor healing, not love that liberates, nor justice that transforms. Not the new world we hope to grow from the ruins of all that is destroyed. Everything we need the most for our collective soul to make it through this alive requires great urgency and abundant patience. Whenever possible, take a breath and find again in the rhythms of life best for growing our souls. Let us go to God in a moment of stillness. God of light, we thank you for this season that we celebrate your son's birth and life on earth. A time where we feel hope, love, joy, and peace through this miracle we remember every year. As we bring the light into our lives, may we remember that the light never left in the first place. We just make that light stronger every year because Christ's love for us never falters and never dims. During this season, we celebrate how that light came in to be and how we can share that miraculous light to the world. May we always remember the light within us and Christ's love for us, and that we are all children of God. Let us join together in the reading of our Advent prayer. I believe in the living God, who is directly involved in the affairs of the world. I believe that God chooses the meek and the poor to shame the proud and the rich. I believe in the incarnate word, leaping in a woman's womb, cradled in poverty. I believe in Jesus, true Son of Mary, true Son of God, who came among us in weakness, and we might come to know the profound strength available to common people, who turn to God in trust and with love. Yes, my friends, this I truly believe. Amen. Lost and weary traveler Searching for the
searching everywhere you go. Strangers who are searching, longing deeply to be known. May you find the light. May you find the light. May you find the light to guide you home. Lost and weary travelers searching for the for someone you know. May you find the light. May you find the light. May you find the light to guide you home. May you find To guide you. I am Carter and I believe because I am loved. Hi, my name is Grayson and I believe in God and friendship. I believe in the angels that watch over us. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. Um, I'm Father Tooth Fairy and the Easter Bunny. And Santa. And Champ. I believe in that people are good and um, I also believe in God and Jesus and the Easter Bunny and Santa. And the Tooth Fairy and Paris. I'm Chase, and I believe that you will be forgiven if you do the right thing. I'm Taylor, and I believe that God and Jesus will always be with us even through these tough times. Hi, my name is Peyton, and I like warm hugs. Hi, my name is Nora, and I believe in God even when times are tough. Hi, my name is Gabby, and I believe that God is always with us. Hi, my name is Macy, and I believe that God will come back. Hi, my name is Brinkley, and I believe that God made us all in His image, and it's not His fault that some of us are choosing to be bad. My name is Peyton, and this is my little brother Andrew, and I believe in Jesus because He brings hope to the world. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. For Matthew, the birth story is always told from the perspective of a post-resurrection world. Therefore, Jesus is always in conflict with the kingdoms of the world and the kingdom he is bringing into existence. This text challenges the existing religious leadership and the royal Hebrew authority of Herod and even the reign of the Roman occupiers. Plus, it proclaims the gospel even for Gentiles, the wise ones, and not just the Jewish people. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in the territory of Judea, during the rule of King Herod, Magi came from the east to Jerusalem. They asked, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We've seen his star in the east, and we've come to honor him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, and everyone in Jerusalem was troubled with him. He gathered all the chief priests and legal experts and asked them where the Christ was born. They said, In Bethlehem of Judea, for this is what the prophet wrote. 
you Bethlehem land of Judah. By no means are you least among the rulers of Judah, because from you will come one who governs, who will shepherd the people of Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and found out from them the time when the star had first appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search carefully for the child. When you found him, report to me that I too may go and honor him. When they heard of the king, they went. And look, the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stood over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy. They entered the house and saw the child with Mary, his mother. Falling to their knees, they honored him. Then they opened their treasure chests and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Because they were warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went back to their own country by another route. A word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. many years growing up, I was a part of a program called Relay for Life. This was an overnight event that you raised money for cancer research. Everyone was a part of a team and you essentially had a competition on who could raise the most money. However, all of the money went to the same cause at the end. We had this event at my high school track. My favorite part of the night was when we would all turn the floodlights off in the field and all that was lit was the luminaries and the stars. The luminaries were dedicated to those who are cancer survivors and those whose cancer took their life. On the risers, there were also luminaries that spelled out the word hope. Although the bright floodlights were off, everything still seemed so bright. The stars and the luminaries guided our way around the track all night long. And when my friends and I would take our breaks from walking, we would lay on the field just to stare at the stars and at the luminaries. Reflecting on these memories on my high school track, it made me think of the story that we share on Epiphany. The Magi, or the Wise Ones, were asked by King Herod to go find this king of the Jews. They agreed and saw a star shining brightly. They followed the star with the hope that it would lead them to the child that they were searching for. Now, in the 21st century, Jerusalem to Bethlehem are about 23 minutes away from each other. A lot of trip planning websites that I looked at said that the walk is easy and it's doable if you take specific roads. However, the terrain was very different thousands of years ago. No electricity, no roads with signs and directions pointing you where to go. The Magi had to trust that this star in the night would lead them where they needed to go. away from Bethlehem, there were two wise kings. One night, a star in the distance shone more brightly than the others. The wise men knew that it was important. They had heard news of a new baby king born in Bethlehem. They decided to follow the star.
you ever had so much faith that you were willing to follow a star to an unknown destination? And with this question, I don't necessarily mean that you're going to go outside, point at an actual star, and see where it leads you, but more of where have you taken that leap of faith in your life? What were the risks and the challenges you had to come to take that leap or follow that star? The reason I got so involved in Relay for Life was quite a few of my family members are cancer survivors or have lost their lives to cancer. If anyone knows how to take a leap of faith and follow a star is my grandma. When my grandma was younger, she was diagnosed with cervical cancer and it was moving fast. She had a near-death experience that she vividly remembers. It was an essentially a see the light kind of a moment. Years later, when I was a senior in high school, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. My family was absolutely shook by this as my aunt just passed away after a very long battle with breast cancer. None of us really felt hopeful, but my grandma reacted the opposite way. She took a leap of faith and began radiation right away and did everything she could to survive. And she beat cancer for the second time. My grandma is a great example to me that you can take the leap of faith and you can follow that star. And it all, won't always be easy and what you expect. And there will be challenges and there will be moments where you question and where you doubt. But if you keep following that star, you will find that light. I can only imagine that the Magi's journey wasn't easy. There were probably weather complications and challenges on finding places to get food and water, but they persisted. I feel like sunsets brought that hope for the Magi because as the sun sets, the stars make a reappearance for another night, knowing that every sunset brings them closer and closer to the light they have been looking for. In this new year, where do you think the star will lead you? Will the star lead you to do more justice work, helping those who are experiencing homelessness or do not have enough to eat? Is the star leading you to reach out to those you have broken relationships with? Is the star leading you to just slow down and spend more time with family? And if you cannot see the star, if you get off course, or if you don't know which path to take, how will you find Christ's light in the challenging time? 2020 has been a hard year. And unfortunately, just because the year has changed doesn't mean everything will magically go back to normal. But my wish for us as Methodists of the Gallatin Valley is to find where we can find places to take that leap of faith like the Magi did and discovering where the star or the light will lead us. As I reflect on those long hours at night I spent on that track at Relay for Life, I would stare at the luminaries that spelled out the word hope. When a light would go out in one of those luminaries, it was immediately relit. This epiphany, we reflect on the challenges we faced in 2020. The terrain was not what we anticipated, but we made it through and we made it through together. Let us find our stars in 2021 and take that leap of faith and hold on to hope. Amen.
And the answer to the trivia question, how many wise men does Matthew say came? He doesn't. He just says they came. Now, we've always assumed there are three because there are three gifts, but we don't really know. I want to invite you to join us next week for a new worship series, Speaking Christian. We use some really big, strange words. I call it Christianese that we speak. And that language doesn't necessarily translate to our world as outsiders. It also doesn't translate to the way we experience our faith in real life. These words are complex and they have a myriad of meanings. We're going to start next Sunday by exploring the concept of salvation. What exactly is it we're seeking salvation from? Who is doing the saving? If Jesus died for our sins, then what exactly are we supposed to be doing now? Great questions we're going to wrestle and struggle with. Hope to see you next week. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year.